Wanted to kick off a new series doing something a bit different than we've done in the past. I'll be analyzing Blitz games still, but I've specifically chosen these Blitz games due to the openings or the interest. Something sticks out to me in each one of these games that were played. So hopefully you'll learn something. I have quite a number of them at this point as I've been saving them for quite some time. And as we've gotten finished with the viewer analysis games that have been sent to me again, please send me some more games if you feel that they merit analysis and are interesting and can add to the information on the channel, especially if it's in openings that I'm not playing. All right, let's get to it and take a look at this first game. And in this first game, it has been requested that I play some more Alakine. And I do love the Alakine. It's probably my first love against E4. And my text on Chessable really shows it. The Dark Knight Rises. And we get one of the most common ways that I see the Alakine being avoided with Knight C3. And I analyzed this at great depth in the text. And... Building up to the text on Chessable, I had a lot of options to consider here where you, you can go e5, but typically not an e5 player, so I've never been a big fan of that. d6 can go into a fill door or a check system. We have a great series that on the channel, and it's been updated and improved on the Palm Beach Chess Patreon. Then we've got the main move, d5, which I played in the game. And there are some really interesting lines that can stem from this variation. I used to get trashed in blitz by this line. And then with deep analysis in the text, I found that black is just simply better here. Even though our pawn structure is ruined, it is still a pawn in hand. You just need to know exactly how to navigate these waters. And even though it's dangerous, nothing to be concerned with. And if the most dangerous line isn't to be concerned with, capturing and releasing the tension is definitely not going to do it. And here after knight takes d5, I believe the most critical continuation is bishop c4, and after knight b6, bishop b3, c5. And you can definitely take a look in the database and see games by Grandmaster Bortnik, who's definitely the most frequent and top player of the Alakine defense in the world. But in the main game, after knight takes d5, my opponent plays knight takes d5 straight away back. And that is a bit of an issue because now it's like we're getting a center counter or Scandinavian for free. So the typical center counter the knight comes to c3, and now you're going to need to move the queen. Queen d6, queen d8, queen a5 are the main lines. Queen a5, I think, is the eldest and still the most reputable, but I'm having to lose time. The difference with our position is that with the knights being traded, we are not losing any time. So we have that expression in chess, never bring your queen out early. It's if she can be attacked, if she's being kicked around. And in this case, she's simply not. It's a great piece in the center. And I'm able to generate some decent pressure quite quickly here. And I mean, developmentally, I feel like Black's already... It, it seems like Black's cheating because I've got extra developmental moves in here. And after c4, what would you do? This is a good pause your video and try to figure it out because... We have less than 10 moves left in this game at this point. And I like this example game because we go from just solid moves in the opening to all of a sudden white has pitched it and is nearly lost. So, queen e4 check. I like this move because it is definitely is putting the most pressure on white, where bishop e3 is going to be the optimal move, and then 
more than likely e5 or castle queenside. But bishop e2 is played, and now there's a big problem due to the pin. We click the pawn, and when you're playing this type of system or these games, at this point when I take an advantage, and this is a psychological thing that I see constantly when I'm analyzing my students' games, they'll take a big advantage, they know they're winning, and it's like they relax and then they let their opponent back in. This is the time that you want to be definitely most accurate in the game and bear down on the opponent. And on the other end, you have the opponent just made a mistake. If you're the person who just blundered, you need to hold it together. <laughs> you need to reset your brain. If it's a tournament game, get up, walk around the room, come back. Because mistakes will follow each other and they'll get much worse if you become emotional in this situation. So I feel like if my opponent hadn't got emotional here, he's like, okay, I've got double pawns. I have the bishop pair. Bishop pair's got to be worth something. I'm going to make something happen. But right now, this knight's causing a big threat on c2. Probably needs to play something like bishop d1 to cover that threat. And he played too quickly and missed it. So now, we need to be as clean as possible. Gain with tempo. I want my bishop in the game. And my opponent played too quickly. And as a result, this is one of those maybe transitioning from bullet into blitz, practicing and playing different time controls. Not quite sure what happened overall in the game, but stemming from the first part of the opening, much, much better to keep tension. If you're simply releasing temp tension in the opening, it's going to give black an easy game a lot of the time. This knight takes d5 move, I mean, when you look in the database, Black wins roughly 60% of the games, not counting draws. And there's a good reason for that. If you want to try to beat your opponent, you've got to keep tension. And then when we look, bishop c4 scores about equal. Knight c3 isn't the most optimal way to face the Alakine. But overall, this knight takes d5 move was the key culprit that ended up sending white down the path to from equality to falling right off. That'll do it for the first one.